All right, guys and gals, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Back in the action once again. Another great day comes to an end, but it's time to get back to work now. We get it ready for tomorrow's trading session. It's Wednesday evening, after all. It is March 25th, 2020. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to help us find the best entry setups for tomorrow's trading session. And I get the charts all prepped up. I get the calendar all ready for tomorrow. We get a great video in store for you guys and gals tonight. Before we jump into the charts, though, before we put all the plan together, though, I just want to remind you, if you're here for the first time right now, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you never miss another great video. Drop those questions in the comment section below and hit that thumbs up button for me if you tune in every evening always appreciate you guys showing the love hit that thumbs up button for me if you tune in every evening on this video speaking of video let's not waste any more valuable time i want to kick off tonight's newsletter by taking a peek at tomorrow's economic news calendar that way we know the schedule for tomorrow let's grab the economic news calendar courtesy of econo day tomorrow of course is a thursday morning it is march the 26th now, of course, as we go into the end of the week, whenever I start talking about Thursdays and Fridays, we always know as we get later in the week, we expect to see more volatility. Now, of course, this is not just the end of the week. You may also recall that we've only got a couple more days left in the month. So over the next couple days, and I know this seems a little bit insane, but we are probably going to continue to see increased volatility. We know the world is all waiting on this stimulus bill right now we know everybody's watching countries right like india and italy and the united states and how they handle the spread of this virus so we know that volatility levels are really at unprecedented levels here right now it doesn't look like there's gonna be much relief on that anytime soon as we go into the end of the week we expect to see increased volatility and most importantly the end of the month of march remember the month of march the month of march is notorious not just for day traders but the the overall financial markets because it's the end of the first quarter, right? So people are scrambling right now to try to button up and try to plug all the holes in their balance sheet as they go into the end of the month. What that means for us is more volatility. And remember, whenever we have more volatile markets, we make some small adjustments. Remember, the first thing I do whenever I know that I've got extra volatility is I slow down the time frame. If I'm trading on a 500 tick chart, I'll go to a 1,000 tick chart. A one minute time frame, go to a two minute time frame. So slow down the time frames. What that does in these high volatility times is it quiets down a lot of the noise. Now, when you slow down your time frames, what's gonna happen? The candlesticks are gonna be bigger, which means you're going to have to widen out your stops. Now, of course, when you widen out your stops, you also need to widen out your targets as well to balance out the risk and reward. Now, with bigger stops, you get bigger targets, but there's also that extra risk involved, which means you've got to cut your position sizes in half, right? So we want to cut down those position sizes. So once again, end of the week, end of the month, increased volatility over the next couple trading sessions. <laughs> and I, I almost laugh just saying that right now because obviously we've seen just insane amounts of volatility here, but that is expected to continue here over the next couple days. So my plan is going to be, and we'll share this of course with all of our clients tomorrow morning in the trade room, is to make sure we slow down the time frames, right? Slower chart time frames, quiet down the noise, widen out those stops and of course those targets right there's more risk involved with higher volatile markets but there's also more reward involved but remember you've got to deal with the risk first and to deal with the risk first you cut those position sizes down those four things are going to allow us to confidently capitalize on all this real great volatility that we're seeing every morning in our trade room and of course on our charts so we know right away as we go into the next couple days we are watching volatility also be aware too we're likely going to have some gold rollover i'm watching gold right now we're not 
quite out of the woods yet on the GC420, but you want to be watching that contract on the 620 contract on the gold right now. We are almost half and half here. You know, gold's always kind of funny. It's, it's always a little bit of a moving target when gold will roll over. My best advice to you, you know, most markets you can pretty much you can pretty much time the, the rollovers pretty easily. Gold is always kind of a question mark. So tomorrow morning when I get back to my desk, and obviously if you're in Asia or in London, you want to be watching the volume on that 620 contract because once that exceeds the 420 contract, then we're going to make that roll over to that 620 contract. Now, don't forget, I cover I cover all the details of contract rollover, contract expiration in our beginner classes here at School of Trade. So definitely log into your account here at SOT. Right, grab those beginner classes if you need more help on rollover. Rollover is definitely one of the biggest challenges for someone who's not familiar with trading futures because there's no rollover in ETFs or stocks or right forex right there's rollover in futures and we talk all about that in our beginner classes here at school of trade so we're definitely watching rollover here the next couple days as well it could be tomorrow it could be friday it could be next week it could be next monday it'll probably be sometime between now and the end of the week but again i'm telling you right now it's always a bit of a moving target now of course as far as news goes tomorrow there is some news tomorrow you can see of course we got some pretty big news tomorrow morning right out the gate we got gdp now of course this is the gdp for the last quarter. This is not going to be the GDP that everyone's going to have to kind of cringe over three months from now, but that will be the GDP from the last quarter. So, you know, I, I would say normally that GDP would be important, but I think there's that big cloud. I mean, everybody knows what's going to happen in the next GDP. So I just don't think you're going to see a lot of people that are going to be paying a lot of attention to that. I don't anticipate that to be as as what it would normally be would be a very market moving event. Um, international trade, also something too that will probably get swept under the rug tomorrow morning. And I'll tell you, we may not we may not see the markets move off of this, but this is going to be a really interesting jobless claims tomorrow. They're, they're talking about right now uh, a, a, a two million 2.5 million um I, I live in los angeles and uh the number came out today just in the last few you know since this since this virus has hit california said over a million people who have filed for jobless claims benefit will we see a 2.5 3 million jobless claims i i mean i never thought i was the day i would i would see that number we typically see you know what a buck 25 you know 125,000 right on, on a on a uh on a, on, on, a, on a weekly basis, we might see a dramatic number tomorrow. You know, and of course, you know, we, we, we talk about this news report every week, right? This jobless claims report. The jobless claims report, honestly, to be very clear, um, hasn't been a market mover since the last financial crisis. No joke, right? It's been over 10 years since we really cared much about these jobless claims. This could be a jobless claims revival. It, it, it really could. This could be the new durable goods, right? This could be this could be the new PMI flash. I'm half kidding with you, but we're definitely watching closely here tomorrow to see how the market responds, right, to those jobless claims and of course the GDP now obviously we've been talking about this all week we still are waiting on the house now to approve that stimulus bill they got it pushed the Senate last night and the markets really weren't happy today you could definitely tell we heard from some senators in the house right here in the US they're trying to you know it, it sounds like they're trying to stuff this bill with a bunch of pork and a bunch of pet projects right now and the markets are clearly not very happy with that I think that's gonna be a theme for tomorrow we saw a bunch of ranges on the charts tonight and we'll we'll, we'll take a look at those here in a moment but i think right now though I, you know a lot of this under normal conditions, this would be very, very big news tomorrow morning, but I think the markets are going to wait for more guidance of what's coming out of Capitol Hill. It went right to the Senate pretty easily. They're waiting on the House to give the approval right now, and then it goes up to the president's desk for that final vote. Tomorrow, you know, like I said last night, if, if, they, if they can get this thing through the House tonight, tomorrow should be a really busy day. If they can't get it through the House tonight, then we're probably going to keep getting a bit of this, you know, back in forth range bound stuff like we saw on the S&P right and gold here for this morning so 
A lot of this is very much up up in the air right now. I will definitely be tuning in tomorrow morning bright and early. I will be watching closely overnight. That way I can make sure to give you guys some guidance tomorrow in the trade room when we trade it together. Speaking of the trade room tomorrow, don't forget, I'll put all the registration information. We trade this stuff together every morning at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. you got to be a member to get access. You can find all of the information. I'll put a link in the description of this YouTube. YouTube video. If you're on the blog right now, I'll put a big blue button for you there to get registered as a client. That way you can do it with me tomorrow morning in the trade room. All right, let's not waste any more valuable time. Let's jump into these charts here for tonight. Got a lot to cover here. There's not, they're all pretty easy, right? Got a pretty easy lesson for us here tonight. We get some oil, some S&P, and of course, some gold here. Now, gold is that rollover. Let's jump in and let's grab a look here at the gold here first, right? We talked about rollover on the gold. Let's get that one out of the way here first here tonight. Again, this is the 420 contract. We may be looking at a 620 contract here tomorrow or Friday. So be aware. I wish I could give you some more information on that, more definitive information on that. But I'm just, just, just like you, I'm kind of waiting on gold to give me the approval there for rollover. Now, what do we know about about gold right now. What we know is we know that the market pretty much spent most of its time today kind of stair stepping its way lower and then it spent most of its time right kind of sitting inside of this trading range. So the way I would describe this market is we're, we're bearish, right? We obviously have bearish momentum. You'll notice I'm not talking about the long term trend right now. I'm not a long term trader. I'm a short term trader, right? If you're looking for long term trading stuff, unfortunately, this is not the right channel. This is not an investing channel, right? This is a day trading channel. So we're short term traders. So all I really care about in the short term is what is momentum and what type of day are we dealing with right now? We're looking at a range range bound markets tell me to buy low sell high avoid the middle range bound markets are balanced so imagine right there's a big old balance big magnet right in the middle here right that's kind of a magnet drawing in i know i have a bearish bias to this day which means i want to be selling above the range with a target going back into the range. And of course, with a bear bias, I can buy underneath the range, but I have to be careful because I'm obviously going against the market's momentum. So that's the big, that's kind of the big factor right now here on the gold. We know we're in a range and we know we're bearish. And so anytime I'm bearish, I wanna be a seller, obviously. I wanna sell at resistance. And so what I'm looking for here is, I got my range drawn up. I'm gonna use that trading range to find this sell zone overhead. I call these battle zones because they're areas where the bulls and the bears will go to battle and usually, right, the in this case, the bears will usually win that battle. And there's opportunities in those battle zones because that's where traders often get caught trying to trade breakouts and try to try to try to do things they normally shouldn't right they, they shouldn't be doing so we know we've got levels of resistance overhead that's an important area but I'll tell you look at this trend line right this is a beautiful trend line as you can see here that's a great level of resistance that is something I'm watching closely for tomorrow hopefully ideally what would really be a nice though is is if we could buy ourselves some time and then try to use that trend line later on in the day tomorrow, because you'll notice it also lines up with this one too. If I line up these lows and then bring it to the high here, you can see where both of these levels really line up here. You know, this is really a sweet spot for us here tomorrow. Hopefully, if I have it my way, they'll give us a little bit of time here overnight and they'll wait until we get right into that little, right, that little nook right there, right? And that's where you, I would imagine, a lot of people are gonna hit that thing pretty hard. So we know we're bearish. I wanna be a seller at resistance. You can definitely see some key levels of resistance here overhead, measuring my measured move right finding prior swings trend lines channels coming down right so we know we have levels of resistance now as we go lower I'm also finding levels of support down here right this of course will be a trend line I've got a big round number down there they may come down to grab that big round number and whoop right back up into that range as well so I do have support levels down here but I gotta be careful right because we are so bearish or at least in the short term here right on the gold so 
what's the plan here for tomorrow? First of all, how do we sell this market? How do we sell this market? I want you to pay close attention to these two, right? These two levels, right? You get the trend line overhead and the hidden channel overhead here, right? There's really going to be two types of patterns I'm looking for. One is going to be a two try failure pattern. And this would really be kind of your, you know, kind of par for the course, as we say. Uh, you know, anytime I have a range bound market, I focus on failure patterns. Now, a lot of this is going to have to do with when we get this break higher. If we get the break higher in the short term and we see the buyers ultimately try to get the breakout, try to hold the pullback at the moving average, I'm just going to look to sell this thing right back down, right into those into that range, right? So imagine they try to run it higher, the buyers come in, they buy the pullback, you know where their stops are, right? Their stops are sitting right below that low, right? If we jump up like this, moving average comes over, buyers try to buy the pullback off the moving average, we know that we know we're bearish, we know we're above the range, we know we have resistance up there, I know where their stops are now, right? And now I can just simply wait and just simply sell into those stop losses, right? Going back down into that range, because after all, the range is the magnet. Remember, that's the key focus here on that gold. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is, is if we get up above that trend line, right? And again, Again, this is very much in the short term here. If it pokes its head higher, we've got that big trend line coming down overhead, and I can still use this area. But if we if we really jump, right? If we really jump, and it and it could because there's that leftover range from yesterday up there. Remember that range from last night's newsletter? That range is still there, so they may really pop here. If they pop, then what we want to do is we want to use the same failure pattern, but now I'll opt for what I call a nested failure, which is just a a little bit more conservative, if you will, right? Once we see that big breakout higher, what I'll do is, is I'll wait for the buyers now, try once, try twice, then we'll look for those stop losses and look to sell into those stops. So keep that in mind here. And again, if we get lucky, right, if we really get, if the uh, if the trading gods are, are tuning in tonight on this newsletter, they'll wait for this thing to pop here and we'll be able to use both of these together, right? And we'll be able to use that buyer failure and again, sell it back down into that trading range. So a lot of this has to do with kind of how the timing, right, of this works. Now, you might be wondering, is there any possibility because because you know, if you look, if you look left, there's a lot of bullishness here, right? Now, remember, we always talk about what do we always say? Anytime we have a strong move in one direction, we usually get a two-legged pullback and a retest of the high, right? So when I see this on gold, I think to myself, okay, the buyers, the buyers got what they wanted. They don't have any unfinished business up there, right? It'd be different if they hadn't retested that high, but they've already retested the high. Right, you can remember that. So the buyers have already, they already kind of scratched that itch, right? Now we may see, you know, in all reality, you could you could definitely look at this and say, well, maybe this is one, maybe this is two, I don't know, right? Maybe something happens overnight and they make a run back up to retest the high. How could I buy this market? Right? What would be a what would be a mark what would be a way to buy this thing here right now as it goes higher? Now remember you got that big seventeen hundred level overhead. Major, major, major top up there at seventeen oh five and change here. So how can I do this? If the market runs up, I'm looking for buyer failures back in, nested failures back in. But what if we get a one, two, and we hold the right hold the pullback? Now what do we do? Now what I can do is I can mark up a high. I can mark up a low and I can buy the pullback off of that hidden channel. This is called a one, two, three reversal, as in one, two, three, right? Market reverses. I'm not trying to predict the reversal because again, we're too bearish right now. If I can get that one, two, three reversal, I can now look to buy right off that pullback off that channel. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes these things just snap. And if they snap and really run higher here, I'll look for one of my favorite patterns when I'm running out of space. Remember, we get that big level of resistance here overhead. I'm looking for a strong move higher. This will usually be a very shallow pullback, right? It won't always pull back to the moving average and then trap low, right? My objective, of course, will be 
get me up to get me up to those highs those are two patterns i'm watching for as we go higher whatever you do though don't try picking those bottoms right don't try predicting that reversal it's that one two three reversal then mark the channel and then you can buy the pullback off that low or excuse me or right it's that come on come back to me here sorry about this See what I do? I get going too fast there, right? Or it's that strong move up, that shallow pullback, right? That higher high, when you get that higher high, that's your that's a trick, right? Then you know you got that higher high, there's your trap low. I call that a two try trap pattern. Now guys, don't forget all of these patterns, we're gonna trade them together tomorrow in the trade room. But if you're not with me tomorrow in the trade room, the next best thing is to grab the free trading course. Our free trading course, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner for you. That free trading course will walk you through my three step trading strategy all my favorite entry setups, and I'll show you hundreds of examples of how we apply them to our favorite markets. Everybody loves that free course. The best thing, obviously, is for you to come in and trade with me tomorrow, but if you can't be there with me, I completely understand. Grab that free course in the upper right-hand corner, right, and get registered. That way you can learn all the details of this strategy. And guys, don't forget, I'm gonna put all the links, the membership links, the trade room links, the free course links, I'll put all those links right in the description of this video tonight to make it really easy for you to find them all right now if the market goes sideways here on gold what do we do we do nothing right we don't want to touch the middle what is the mark goes goes lower right how do we buy it how do we sell it if i want to be a buyer down here i'm going against momentum so what's the best way to be a buyer below a range with a bear market right with a bear momentum on our hands i want to trade failure patterns in range bound markets when i say range you should be thinking failures the only difference is it's a two try failure to sell above the high it's a nested failure right to buy below the low the reason why we use the nested failure is because you're going against momentum. I think that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, drop me some questions in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking and I'll be sure to, you know, kind of confirm that or kind of clarify that in the comment section once we're done. And if you're loving this stuff so far, hit that thumbs up button for me. I really appreciate that. So we're buying low, we're selling high. Now, what about going lower here? How do I get short down here? Now, what you want to really be careful is if we do make a run lower, right? It doesn't take a very skilled technician here right now to look at this and say, this could easily be a range, right? So if we make a run lower, this could easily be a two try failure. It's the same failure pattern we keep talking about. So be very careful trying to be a seller down here. What I'd like to do is, is get underneath this range, grab the low of that, that trend line, right? And just go one, go two, right? And then buy right into those stop losses for potentially a nice little slingshot right back up into that range. How could I sell it down here though? What's the best way to sell in a bear market that's really going sideways in a range? I want to use one of those two breakout patterns. What were they again? Breakout patterns are a one, two, three breakout. Mark that low, mark that high. We're selling off the high of that channel, right? What's the second one called? A two try breakout. Strong move down, shallow pullback, lower low, trap high. Now remember that trap high is really the cherry on top. You could get aggressive if it really runs, one try for the bulls, two try for the bulls, right? That is the more aggressive way to do it. So if you do see it really make a run lower here, buyers try once, buyers try twice, nice juicy signal candle. The problem with those, those are more aggressive because you're technically selling relatively low. I like to use the trap with my two try breakouts. Strong move down, shallow pullback, little lower low, not by much, and then trap, right? This is the one, this is the one I tell my clients, when you're relatively new to trading, this is the one you really want to focus on for that breakout, right? The ideal is the one, two, three breakout. If you're not, if you don't get it, right? Again, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're going, okay, pull back for me and give me that one, two, three breakout here, but it never comes. Sometimes you never get the pullback, right? Sometimes it just keeps on collapsing and if it keeps collapsing, you got to get more aggressive with it. Shallow pullback, trap high for that two try trap pattern going lower. So as you can see, we got everything all planned out here. Stay away from the middle buy those lows, 
sell those highs. And remember, it's a range. So we're focused on failure patterns and we're focused on breakout patterns. We'll do this more together tomorrow morning in the trade room at the opening bell. Let's keep this party going here. How about some oil here tonight? Oil appears to be right back to its old tricks again. We find ourselves on oil pretty much you know, doing what we talked about at the beginning of this week, right? We had that weekend gap, as I mentioned before, right? Monday, you know, Monday evening's newsletter a couple days ago, we talked about that weekend gap. That's last Friday's close to, right, Sunday evening's open. And you'll notice, I mean, that's pretty much where the market wants to keep going back to. I tried to warn you about this earlier this week, and, you know, hopefully you kept that in mind here. That's why I left that 2365 level right on that chart. So, you know, again, last night on the newsletter, we left off. We had that range, right? Remember this remember this great channel up here, right? We're trying to sell off top of that channel back into that range. It's like popped up, right? Now, you'll notice, right? This is a great example. It was a range yesterday or, or last night, right? We jump up, right? Now, I want to sell back into the range, but I can't sell that big, strong move. What do you do? Nested, right? One, two two and everybody was waiting on that second one and they just smacked that sucker right back down into the range so now rinse and repeat right take take this take this and we're going to pop it right over here now it's very very similar we collapse back into the range we spend most of our time in the range here right now and again it's almost a carbon copy here you know it's obviously a little bit less right but it's very very close here a very strong run up right we are we are well outside of that range here right we're in the we're in that what i call the second deviation right we're we're way outside of that range right we're not inside of these little tight ones here okay those those first expansion levels right these these first two levels, these are where you can get pretty aggressive, right? But once you start getting into these outside levels here, now momentum becomes a big right? a big factor. Not a problem, a big factor. We always want to go up and back into the range, right? We want to go up and back into the range. But as you can see, all of that momentum, right, as it goes higher here. So really, it's kind of the same plan from last night's newsletter. I'm anticipating a lot of buyers are going to see this big push up. And what I've done is I thought, okay, if I didn't realize this is a range, if I didn't tune in every evening and watch this video, I would probably draw a channel off these highs. I would line it up that low. And if, if I didn't know any better, right, I would do exactly what they did over here, right? Mark the highs, mark the lows, and I would try to buy off the low, right? I mean, that's what happened early this morning. I would assume they're going to try again. And can you can you blame me, right? I'm looking for the same basic idea here. So, you know, one of my first trading coaches, right? Thank goodness for trading coaches because they really shorten the learning curve for you. One of my first trading coaches told me a long time ago, he said, Joe, the, the easiest money you're ever going to make is when you are catching those breakout traders, right, on the wrong side of the market. It's a range. Again, the gap kind of gave it away earlier. The candlesticks give it away now, right? So we know that big, strong move up. Buyers are going to have a hard time resisting this, right? And if they fail, I'll be right there to sell, and so will you, right, to sell right into those stop losses. Now, it's a range market. Range markets tell me to buy low, sell high, focus on failures, right? So failure patterns and breakout patterns. Okay, those are the two patterns we're looking for in range bound markets. As I zoom in again here now, I'm using that, and again, this is very similar to last night's newsletter, pretty much the same exact plan. I want to go back into that range here, right? Now, remember, we got all that momentum going higher here right now. So what's the plan? The plan is one, the plan is two, and go. If I can get, if I can get the best scenario here, the best scenario would be if I could get a one, a two, a little double top, a little trap high off of that, that's gonna that's the good stuff right there, right? That's a lot like, right? That's a lot like that to try trap pattern that I talked about before. That would be ideal, right? All we really need though is like we saw last night, right? Go up one, two, and then back down again. I've got my anticipation level here. I'm looking for one, I'm looking for two, and then back down we go into that range. Now, heads up on this. 
right? Again, this is a failure pattern, failure off the high, failure off the low, sell high, buy low. It's a nested failure because of the momentum that we're using here. Keep an eye on this too, because as this thing collapses back in, we oftentimes see one of those two try traps and you want to stay focused on those just outside of the of the range, right? So imagine now we go over, we come down, right? And you'll have that Again, it's a failure pattern into that two try trap. Remember, once you start getting into that range, like we saw back here, you're gonna see a lot of people start to pick those tops, right? You'll see a lot of those trappers waiting above that range. Why? Because nobody wants to trade inside the range. The range is the magnet, right? They're trying to get in outside of that range. So just like we saw that move up strong, one, two, collapse back down in, and then traps above that high, Keep your eyes open for that tomorrow as well, right? So one, two, if we get a trap high on that, even better, not required by any means, and then down to the range, right? And then look for those traps on the way, right? On the way through, okay? Those are two really great setups we're watching for as we wanna be a seller. Now, we talk about breakout patterns, right? How would you put a breakout pattern? What a breakout pattern look like? Well, they've already got momentum, all you guys gonna do here, Bulls, is hold this baby. If you hold it and make a nice jump up, we're, we're good to go, right? You guys have all momentum on your hand. The, all the momentum is on your side right now for the Bulls. We got all that momentum. All they have to do is, is hold this thing and go, right? Nice strong push higher here. I'm convinced, right? I'm good. Now, if we can get this, again, one, two, three breakout, now I'm gonna go out and adjust that channel, right? And I'll make that channel much steeper and we'll look for buy setups right off the low of that new channel. Now, I'll be I'll be very honest here. A lot of times when ranges break out, they really break the you know what out, right? They break out. So we want to know where we're going here, right? You get that big level up top there, right? That big level up top there around 28. Okay, these markets love to rip right now. So if we can really hold this thing, let me get rid of this this channel here, right? You know, so imagine here now they hold that pullback here on oil. If they can hold that pullback and rip now, again, I would love to get this hidden channel, right? Find my buy off the low of that hidden channel. And just so you know, that buy setup, if you were to kind of zoom in on that a little bit closer, a lot of times it's a two try failure into pullback combination. So if you were to kind of zoom in on that area right there, right, that's usually the setup it looks like, right? It's a failure pattern into a pullback. It almost looks, you know, the location's not very good, but it looks like this, right? A failure into a pullback. It's that same type of idea, right? Again, off the low of that, of that new hidden channel. That is something we're watching here as we go higher. Or we may just see this market run and if it really runs higher here, if you start seeing this thing push higher, you know, we get some news overnight, the market freaks out and reacts bullishly, watch for that shallow pullback, and you'll know it because it won't pull back to the moving average. That, that higher high, usually it's a very small higher high, and then that trap low, it's called a two try breakout pattern, two try trap pattern, right? So two types of breakout patterns, one, two, three breakouts, two try breakouts, Again, as we go higher here, we know where they're trying to go. So now we get a pretty good idea as the market's running higher here. Don't forget, if we find ourselves back down into that trading range, sit on those hands. And then how do we buy the low of this range? Okay, we talked about this last night in pretty good detail, but I want to remind you, if we run back into that range and we stall out down here, it's like a sponge mopping up all momentum. So now when I make a run lower on this, right, now I can be pretty aggressive, right? It's just a range. I want to buy the low of that range and I can wait for, and again, the assumption here is, is they're, they're spending, right, they're doing one of these, right? They're, they're really, they're, they're spending quite a bit of time inside that range, right? That absorbs all that extra momentum. And that's why you'll see buyers eagerly come in and get aggressive below it, right? They're not scared of that big move that preceded it. So again, if we can get this move back down and we see this thing underneath that range, I'm looking for seller failures, right? A simple two try failure pattern, right? Underneath that low. Keep in mind though, if this thing really tumbles, right? If we really tumble and we really run, we don't even care about that range now, 
there's a there's a good chance this becomes a measured move, right? We find ourselves down around this area. If this thing nose dives on you, okay, then you want to think about that more conservative failure pattern, that nested failure, that one, that two, and then up we go from there, right? So remember, range bound market, we're focusing on failure patterns. There's two try failures, there's nested failures. What's the variable? momentum it's all about it's all about momentum and to make again to make it easier to grasp this don't forget that free course that i mentioned earlier that free trading class i'll walk you through all the different scenarios we look for you'll see a bunch of examples of them and it'll really help you get your arms around right which ones we want to be using and then obviously if they can hold the pullback down here and run you know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try looking for a breakout pullback, right, in 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 the range here. You know, but if we can get down to that range, right, and then one, two, three, you know, it's a range, so we can definitely trade breakouts. I have no problem trading breakouts. I'm not going to try to predict the breakout though. That's a fool's game in my experience. I'll wait for that range. I'll wait for that strong move down, that pull back to the moving average, and a strong jump off the moving average. That is one of my favorite breakout patterns. A a one, two, three breakout, mark up that low. Notice how I draw the channel, right? I love to draw these hidden channels, not off the medium term swing, not the most recent swing, but the most kind of the last major swing. That will give you a nice, even, right, spot to sell there up at the top of that channel. Or, you know, if it just dumps and starts collapsing here, if, it re if the blood is all of the streets, right, shallow pullback, if we get enough momentum, Right? I mean, if this thing really takes a nosedive, if we get enough momentum here, you'll see stuff like this, right? Or you'll see it go down, right? And they'll come back and you'll get traps there. So even if you're at the low of that range, you still have that shot here, right? If we get enough momentum as we go here, you should at least be able to get a first target and then hold on to the runner and see how much you get, right? If you get, if you get that much momentum here, you know what I mean? So we'll keep an eye on that breakout as well. Don't forget tomorrow morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, we're doing it together. We know how to trade the breakout higher. We know we're looking for that kind of hidden channel here, looking for those failures back in. We need to avoid the middle here. And we know that how the market moves, if it goes through the range, or if it stalls out inside the range, is going to be a very big variable. It's a range bound market. Keep buying low, keep selling high, and keep, again, widening out those stops, cutting those position sizes down as the volatility levels continue to stay elevated here into the end of the month. Let's keep going here. How about some S&P here? The S&P was the definition of volatile today. One of the widest trading ranges I think I've seen. I mean, I can't even, I, I can't think of the last time I saw a trading range that was this wide on the S&P today, right? It was a pretty much a bear market down, bull market up, bear market down, bull market up, bear market down. And then of course, right, we hear about some good news about the stimulus package and the market rallies higher. So what do we know about, about the, uh, the S&P right now? We know it's a range. We know there is a range. And what is a range? The range is the magnet. Okay, when I say range, what do you think? Balanced, sideways, buy low, sell high, two types of patterns, right? Failure patterns and breakout patterns. Now, this is a great example here on this S&P. They got this huge move higher, all that strength going higher, and look what happened. They couldn't hold it and keep going. And what happens? The buyers buy the pullback, and sure enough, professionals are waiting to, to right, literally to sell into their stops right when it comes back down in. This is the same two try failure pattern that we've been talking about here throughout the entire evening here tonight. So again, range is the most important thing. When I say range, I think price magnet, I think balanced, I think sell high, buy low, focus on failures, and be, be open-minded to, to, to breakouts, but don't even think you can predict them. Because we see lots of real strong, very promising breakout patterns, and we don't get them to hold. So we're trying to go back into the range now. What else do we know? We know we have, obviously, the buyers getting clobbered, right? The buyers fail here and a very strong move down. Now, wait a second. This looks like something we've been talking about tonight. Where have I seen this pattern before? Oh, it's a strong move. A sh look at this. It's a shallow pullback. Doesn't touch the moving average. I'm obviously, I'm kidding with you here right now. That's a two-try trap, isn't it? 
So now you can you probably knew about this before I even did it today, didn't you? Right? If you if you saw this pattern setting up ahead of time, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know, right? Let me know. I want to know. I want to know how good you are right now. I love it when you guys chime in and l- l- let me know you called it here tonight, right? Type the right type the words called it or nailed it or saw it, right? Let me know you're here, right? If you saw that pattern coming a mile away, if you saw it before I told you, hats off to you. Hats off to you. Very, very well done. So you can see here we've got that strong move down. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we expect? We expect a pull back and a retest of that low. So we've got a lot of things looking good right now. The range acts as a magnet. The buyers have tried and they've failed. We had a strong move down, a shallow pullback, a lower low. Now all we need is to get some levels of resistance here, right, to get short. So now what I'm doing is I've got my, my swing high. I'm going to mark up these lows because you know me, right? I like to look for these hidden levels. And now it all comes together here where we have what I think to be a great example of a two-try trap along with the high of a hidden channel. This really makes a lot of sense for me because we go back into the range, we're going on momentum, and you know, in all reality, in all reality, right, you look at the big picture here, if you look left here, right, there's a lot of volume trading hands down around that 24, 24, 50 area. So we got a lot of big magnets drawing us down from there. So how do we get short on this? I think we covered a lot of that already here, right? What if this market runs higher? What if it goes lower? What if it goes sideways here right now? Um, the short-term trade, obviously, is going to be the, right, that, that trap high. Now remember, in these types of situations, what you're gonna want is a nice strong signal candle closing right below the moving average. We'll talk about that in the free trading course I mentioned earlier. We'll also cover this right tomorrow morning in the trade room. All the links are there for you in the description of the YouTube video. So remember, you wanna see that strong candle, right? Closing below the moving average. We'll go over more details tomorrow in the trade room here, and that'll be your sell. Now, if we do get, right, if we do get, let's just say, for example, the market really pops right it, it really it really pops it could i mean you know let's 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 be honest right we still haven't heard from the house yet they may say we're good the deal's good and the market may really pop here if it really pops higher here you know they're trying to retest the high so this is where i'm going to have to be a little more disciplined here now and i'm going to use that nested failure that one that two and then back down from there all right now that's going to be the tricky part the tricky part is going to be if i can get that trap and get that nice thing to line up right off the top of that channel, right? Give us that channel top, nice strong, right? Nice strong signal candle there, closing strong. That'll be a great setup going back into that range. I also like it because you get that trend line coming up and the best pattern to avoid a rising support trend line is always going to be a trap. Trap patterns, one of my four favorite entry patterns, is great whenever you're trying to avoid some level of support that's in your way. But again, if they really pop higher here, now we know what they're trying to do. Now we know all of that momentum. These bulls are playing coy, right? They tried once. This will become the second try. They're going to try to make a run for that retest of the high. You'll know it, right? You'll know it. It'll really pop. And as it really pops here now, now we're waiting for the one, we're waiting for the two, and we can drop that sucker down from there. Now, keep in mind, if we go up and we see that nested failure here, right? One, two two and we drop a lot of times you're going to end up getting what we're getting right now right you'll end up getting that hidden channel you'll end up getting that two try trap right so it's you'll you'll almost i don't want to say always right but you'll oftentimes get this if you can grab again the nested failure you're selling into the stops of those buyers right again the range is the magnet the range is the magnet selling back down to those stops and then as we go lower here it's almost the same situation that we're in right now right and so we want to keep it in mind here for tomorrow all right now one more thing you want to keep in mind would be obviously too if we run up and we stick up here there is, you can definitely see, there's potential this could be a range up here. So, you know, what, what, what I want to remember is if we run, right, if we run here, they're going to lock me in here again, aren't they? Come on. There we go. Right? If they run here now, give me back here. There we go. If they run, sorry about that. If they run back up, right, make the retest the high and start getting stuck going sideways here, that will tell you now there's a new range in town 
right? There's a new sheriff in town, if you will. If they stick up there, just like gold had a range higher yesterday, today the range is lower. We aren't guaranteed to use the same range every day. If they run up and they stick, right? If they continue to go sideways here for a couple hours overnight, now the magnet now, now shifts up. Right, so now there's a magnet, and now it ultimately becomes, come on, Joe, spell correctly here, right? Now it becomes a bull market into a range. How do you trade a range? You buy low, you sell high, you focus on failures and breakouts, right? To try failure pattern, to buy underneath the range, breakout pattern, one, two, three, breakout, right? I know we've covered a lot of those already, so I won't, I won't waste your time by going over the patterns again, but that is the same idea. So we do jump up, and we go sideways there, right? Focus on that new range, okay? A lot of times what will happen is the market will jump. It'll get stuck up here. You know, again, there's a big news report coming out, right? It jumps. It sticks. Now, all of a sudden, that previous range now, apparently, remember, all a range is is the buyers and sellers agreeing on value. So if a news number comes out overnight or if we hear about this, you know, stimulus package here overnight, the market might like that and they might say, okay, our value, our value of price, right, what we, what the buyers and sellers agree on, they've changed from 2430 up to 2560 or it may even go higher, right? It may even, right, it may even rip higher and go higher here and they may say, no, our opinion of value now is 2600 and they may put the range right there. What do you do there? You buy below the range using that two try failure pattern. Right? Or it may run up late in the morning. Oh, something's wrong with the deal. And all of a sudden now we get the one, two, three reversal. Back down in, mark the low, mark the high. We're selling off that high. And at that point now, right, you would think all the way back into that prior range. I'm getting a little bit more complicated right now. Obviously, sometimes these ranges, they break out. They form new ranges. Or, right, that one, two, three reversal, Mark up the high, mark up the low. We're buying off that low, right? Or strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high, trap low, right? That two try breakout pattern. So I think we've covered all the all, all the bases on this. If this thing rolls over and we find ourselves back inside that range, just stay focused on selling high with those two try failure patterns. If it really pops one, two with a nested pattern, right? A lot of this is just repeating myself from earlier on. If we collapse all the way down into that trading range, I've got a beautiful pendulum swing target. This is a chart that all of the, right, that, that the economists don't want to see right now, right? This is something that U.S. President Trump doesn't want to see right now, and that is that, that, that pendulum swing, right? If they can't get this deal done, this market is probably going to swing right back down into that range here we've got ourselves positioned now to capitalize on that trap high right do they roll over and go into the range if that's the case now we, we look for that seller failure again buying low same pattern but if they collapse and dump right you can't even think about being a buyer on that now unless you give them once twice and then buy from there it's that same technique we just talked about on the previous charts where it's all about momentum or it's a one two three breakthrough mark the low mark that hidden channel high and we're selling it on the way down to that pendulum swing all right guys sell high buy low avoid those middles how did i do tonight I try to keep this as simple as I can. You know, trading's difficult. There's a, no, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. I try to keep it as basic and simple as I can here. Don't forget to grab the free trading course to really get a deeper dive into all of these patterns. Don't forget to come out and join me tomorrow and every morning at the opening bell as an advanced member. Again, I'll put all the registration information for you guys to get registered for tomorrow morning's trade room as a brand new client in the description of this YouTube video. And guys, I'm here on the West Coast. I live here in Los Angeles, and yes, I am still in quarantine right now. But anyways, call the toll-free phone number. I will be home. <laughs> I'll, I can pretty much guarantee you that, right? I won't be, I won't be going very far. 
Call that toll-free phone number, right? I'd be more than happy to talk about the details of membership tonight. Uh, use that live support tool, right? I will make sure to be there checking the chat box. And uh, as always, right, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Drop me some questions if you have any in the comments section below. Hit that thumbs up button for me. I always appreciate you guys. Who nailed that pattern? I want to know who nailed that S&P pattern. If you saw that pattern a mile away, great work for you. Give yourself a pat in the back, star of the day, and make sure you come back and see us again soon. Again, as a human being, my heart goes out to anyone who's being affected by this coronavirus right now. Please stay safe. Take care of the people around you, right? Now is the time where human nature really shines. It's a great time to be alive. I know it's scary. As a human being, the emotions are all over the place right now. But as a trader, as a trader, this is go time. This is what we wait for all year. High volatility, lots of opportunities. Come out and see us tomorrow morning at the opening bell, and we'll do it all together. No matter what, thanks for tuning in. Always appreciate you guys carving out some time with me every evening. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. And be here next time, will you? Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.